I now give the floor to Dr. David Nabarro, Special Envoy of the Secretary General in Ebola. Dr. Nabarro is joining us via video conference from Paris. Your Excellency, Pre President Sam Kutesa, uh, President of the General Assembly, Your Excellency, the Secretary General, and um, colleagues and excellencies in this meeting. Uh, thank you very much indeed for convening the event and for keeping the focus of member states on uh, the Ebola outbreak in West Africa. I apologize that I'm unable to be with you today in person. Uh, I made my sixth visit to the West Africa region uh, recently and just returned last week. And now I'm visiting potential supporters in order to try to mobilize more assistance. We've heard how the outbreak has had a devastating impact in West Africa, but also we've also heard positive news. Mali this week being declared free of Ebola, yet another example after Nigeria, Democratic Republic of Congo and Senegal. And we've also heard how the outbreak is evolving and diminishing in the three most affected countries. In fact, week by week, the incidence of new cases is dropping. And the outbreak feels different now. It's no longer a single outbreak spreading from a central point. It's a collection of micro outbreaks, each with its own character and specific needs. Mr. President, it's like when you kick the logs from a fire and leave only scattered embers. Some are burning hot, others are dying out. So it is with the Ebola outbreak. And as the outbreak has evolved, so has the response. It's focused on being nimble, flexible, and adaptable. It's responding to the special conditions of densely populated urban areas, rural communities, and border areas. And within the response, we're all committed to treating people with Ebola and increasingly to hunting the virus wherever it is found through rigorous case finding and contact tracing. As we've heard, we're looking to the end of the outbreak, to supporting swift recovery, schools, markets, businesses needing to open and open safely, health systems being built back stronger in the affected countries and beyond. We're looking forward to an important conference jointly organized by the European Union and the United Nations on March the 3rd in Brussels, where the current state of the outbreak and the response, as well as recovery, will be considered. Thousands of people are involved in this extraordinary response. Patient attendants, nurses and doctors, those who move the sick to hospitals, those who bury the dead. Most are from the affected countries, hundreds of thousands of people, all committed, all working hard, often without a day off, without time off at all. Many are volunteers from abroad. We've heard of the extraordinary response of ECOWAS and of the African Union and of international NGOs. All are working under very difficult and dangerous conditions. I'm pleased also to report that many of the donor nations and partner organizations continue to be engaged and to want to help. They realize that the outbreak will not be over until the last case has been identified and treated. They realize that Ebola will not be gone in any country until it is gone from every country. They want to coordinate. The Secretary General's Global Ebola Response Coalition continues to meet each week. It's just past meeting number 14. It's just produced the Outlook 2015 report. The overview of needs and requirements for the UN system has just been updated. It will be released tomorrow. It shows that the UN system continues to need funds. As the Secretary General said, his multi-partner trust fund is very active. It's already distributed more than 100 million US dollars to the whole system. It's an enormously valuable investment. It needs to be refilled. 
We've heard how neighboring countries have proved to be vulnerable and the international system is working closely with them on preparedness. There are a number of requirements now for getting to zero cases, as Ismail Ulsek Ahmed has pointed out. Let's make certain that communities are at the center of the continued effort, that skilled people have got to where they're most needed, that coordination led by national governments and supported by international experts is fully effective that there is real-time information and data on epidemiology and on anthropology, and that we get the material financial support, medical evacuation facilities, treatment, comfort, safety, logistics, and transport for all responders. Looking forward, Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, it will be necessary to learn lessons. Recriminations are counterproductive but it will be necessary to understand whether this outbreak could have been responded to quicker with less cost and less suffering. And the World Health Organization initiates, initiates a special session of its executive board on January the 25th to start looking at how future global health emergencies can be handled with better efficiency and effectiveness. Mr. President, thank you again for this important event, and I'm delighted to have the, had the chance to address the General Assembly. Thank you again. I thank the Special Envoy of the Secretary General, Nebola, for his statements.